it's kind of hard <laughs> for young uh, men to uh, learn. But as you get older, you understand, you know, uh, you can't force someone to, to listen. Right. Amen. You, you can't force someone. Uh, you, when you know the truth and you know what the Word of God says, you want to, uh, you know, uh, try to get people to, to understand. But you know what? Uh, you know, as the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Uh, and so you got to know, you know, and, and have the discernment of uh, when to shut your mouth, you know, and just go on and, 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 and leave it alone because uh, it does no good to speak into the ears of a fool. Uh, they're not going to listen. And uh, just as it says here, they'll despise your words. Uh, and, and, you know, they'll, they'll sneer at you and, and, and uh, they'll uh, despise you. Which, that's probably going to happen anyway. Uh, but as we're going to find out, the Bible tells us, uh, just leave them alone. <laughs> you know? Look at Matthew chapter uh, 7. And for the most part, you can find out, you can, you'll can, you know real quick if they're going to listen or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, uh, as soon, really, as soon as you start talking about Jesus, <laughs> you'll know <laughs> whether they want to listen or not. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I've had people get, you know, it's, they're so offended by the truth and by Jesus that when you start talking about it, well, then they'll go the other direction and they'll they'll make a point to, to swear or make a point to, to do something really offensive just to try to uh, get you to get angry or something like that. And it's good then just to shut your mouth and just to leave, just to walk away uh, because, you know, they're not going to listen. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6, it said, Jesus says here, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, yeah. lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. And so, uh, again here, this is speaking to the same effect uh, of knowing when, you know, to cast someone away. <laughs> Instead of casting your pearls before the swine, leave them to wallow in the mire, you know. Uh, they're not ready yet. Uh, maybe they'll get to that point uh, where they hit bottom and the only way they, the place they have to look is up. And they'll remember that time uh, that they were foolish and wouldn't listen. Mm -hmm. And maybe then they'll come to a point of wanting to listen. Yeah. And so don't, don't cast your pearls before the swine uh, save, save that for a person who's ready to listen. Yeah, yeah. You know, on visitation, you know, I used to try to force people to listen. You know, when I'd knock on the door and I'm here to tell you about Jesus Christ, and they'd say something like, "Well, I don't have time." You know, I'd keep talking just to try to get them to listen. Uh, but you know, all that does is get them upset, and they get you know frustrated with you, and they don't want to listen in the first place. So I just, you know, now if somebody's not wanting to listen, I just say, well, give them a track. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I learned in the past if you keep on talking uh, and you make them mad when they're not wanting to listen, well, then they don't want to take the track. But at least if you're courteous to them and you don't try to force it, you say, well, can I leave this track? Most of the time they'll say, yeah. And it's probably just to get you to leave, but hey, at least they took that track. Right. And maybe, just maybe, later on, they might read it. Right. And yeah. so, don't cast your pearls before the swine. Look at Titus chapter 3. People get such a bad taste in their mouth from religion that you don't want to give them a bad taste in their mouth trying to beat them over the head with something. 
that they're not willing to listen to. Uh, you know, having the gentleness of Christ as we preach uh, Sunday morning, having that, that gentleness when you're dealing with people is going to go a long way. Maybe not at first, but, you know, loving your enemy, it's like putting those coals of fire on their head. And that's going to work on them. <laughs> and so, patience, amen? Right. Titus chapter 3 and verses 9 through 11 says, But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. I'll tell you what, let's stop it right here for a minute. I've had so many times on visitation, somebody want to hold me up and want to argue about stuff. Yeah. Well, what about this and what about that? And, what? and you can spend your whole time arguing with somebody about stuff when they're not really wanting to listen. They're just wanting to argue. Yeah. And then you wasted a bunch of time, you know, you think you're trying to do a good thing by explaining their questions, but they're not caring about what uh, you have to say. They're only wanting to, to you know, have a confrontation. Yeah. It's better just to say, you know, I, I really don't have time. We're not here to do this. You know, if you want to have a, a Bible study sometime else, you know, I can come back at a later time and, and, and keep on going. Because <laughs> that's all they're trying to do is, is just a confrontation. And most of the time, if you want to get a Bible study started, you know, they don't want that. So, it's just learning, you know, avoid foolish questions genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law. People want to argue about this. People want to argue about that. You know, preach Jesus, amen, yeah. and Him crucified. Yeah. And they're, because those are unprofitable in vain. They're not going to do anything to, to change that person's heart or view. Only Jesus can do that. Yeah. Number 10, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition rejects. If, a, if there's a person who, who you've tried to speak to and, and, and they, they're not going to listen to, to and they're supposedly a Christian or supposedly saved and they're not going to listen to uh, the Word of God, the Bible says after the second admonition reject. Don't have anything to do with it. It's not that you hate them or you count them as an enemy, but don't have anything to do with them. Yeah. Because they, they need to come to a place. God has to chastise them if they are saved. Yep. If they're not saved, then they need to be saved. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, just don't have anything to do with them. It, you know, uh, it has nothing to do with hard feelings against anybody. It's about having, uh, you know... Not striving about words that don't do anything, but but being effective in our witness for Christ. Yeah. You know, Paul, I, I remember he was wanting badly to go, uh, uh, I think it was into Asia. And the Holy Spirit kept him from going. Kept him from going because God wasn't ready for him to go. He was preparing the people down there so that they would get to a point where they were ready to hear it. Amen. Then when he would go, then they would with gladness accept it and, and man, the fire would be kindled and, and the flame would uh, be passed and, and like wildfire. Amen. And so we need to understand that God's timing is His timing and, and you know what? Don't try to force it. Don't try to be the Holy Spirit. Uh, just be faithful, amen? amen? And be ready to give an answer when they ask you. When they're ready to listen, be ready to give that answer. Alright. Verse 11. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. And so, uh, you know, you can talk to your blue in your until you're blue in the face. But until someone's heart is ready to receive the truth, it's just water off a duck's back. It's not really doing anything. Second yeah. uh, Timothy chapter 2. I believe I alluded to this verse earlier. But 2 Timothy chapter 2 
verses 1 and 2, he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to who? To faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Amen. So who are we to teach? Who are we to commit these faithful things? To faithful men. Amen. Men who are ready to receive it. Amen. And not just to receive it for their own benefit, but ready to receive it so that they can teach others also. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's what faithfulness is about. Faithfulness is not just about wanting or being around to listen. It's about receiving it and understanding it so that you can then use it uh, for the service of Jesus Christ. So, speak not in the ears of a fool, but commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Secondly, he says, apply thine heart unto instruction. Yeah. And thine ears to the words of knowledge. Yeah. First, we were dealing with other people. Now we're dealing with ourselves. Amen? <laughs> and really, that's where it starts. How can we teach anybody if we haven't applied ourselves in yeah. our own heart yeah. to instruction? How can we teach someone else what they need to do or what the Bible says if we're not following it ourselves, we need to apply our heart into, unto instruction and our ears to the words of knowledge. Right. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 27, he says... My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. I like that. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Yeah. Man, we need the words of God. Amen. Every day. Yeah. To look upon them and read them. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Don't yeah. go a day without getting into the Bible and reading. Amen? Yeah, man. He says, Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Yeah. Amen. That's a promise, isn't it? Yeah, man. I'll tell you what, there's nothing better for our health than getting into the Word of God. Yeah, amen. Amen. And staying in the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. How are we going to keep our heart with all diligence? By <laughs> keeping His Word yeah. in the midst of our heart. Yeah. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and, a, and perverse lips put far from thee. Yeah. Why? Because sickness is more contagious than health. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> People don't catch on to, to health, but they'll catch on to disease, right? So put away the forward mouth and the perverse lips. Why? Because evil is contagious. Get away from it. You know, you, you look at uh, things on the news sometimes over in, in places where, uh, like Japan or China, where they were having you know, bird flu and, and all these things, and you see all the people walking around and they all got masks on, right? Because <laughs> nobody wants to catch it. <laughs> we, we should be the same way about sin, amen? Yeah, yeah. And stubbornness and rebellion. Stay away from it. Because whether you know it or not, you know, some, some diseases you don't know you've got until you've already had it for a couple of weeks. I think sin's the same way, amen? You don't know it's having a toll on you until weeks later when something pops up and you don't know why, what's going on, right? <coughs> Things happen in your life and you're wondering why. Well, keep yourself from those who are fools. <laughs> yeah. 
And, and from those who don't want to listen, and from those who aren't trying to uh, do right in their lives, yeah. and it's going to keep you from a lot of heartache. Yeah. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Hebrews chapter 12 says, Look unto the author and finisher Amen. of our faith. Amen. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Amen. Established in what? In the Word of God. Amen. Let all thy ways be established in the Word of God. Amen. I tell you what, that's a good... Uh, ground to stand on. Amen. Yeah. When you know all your ways are established in the Word of God, then you don't have to care what other people think about you. Yeah. They might call you a goody two-shoes and say you're on your high horse and you just you, you think you're too good for everyone. But you know what? Who cares what they think? Yeah. Amen. Well, it matters what God thinks. Yeah. And so we need to keep our paths and our feet planted and established in the Word of God. Amen. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Yeah. Look at Proverbs chapter 22. I tell you what, what you know, if you're in a place and, and there's things going on that, that are against God, you need to leave. Amen? You need to get up and go. Don't hang around. You know, even if it's family. A lot of people don't like that, amen? <laughs> Your family might get upset. But it doesn't matter. If you're around family and they're doing things that aren't right, leave. <laughs> get away. You know, I don't want to go into specifics, but uh, we've had problems in the past. People want to do things and certain things that have family meetings or fat family gatherings and and uh, it's not uh, godly. You know what? It's better not to go if that's going to go on, right? <laughs> yeah. Better to stay away. But you know what? If you stand up for the Word of God, it's, it's usually them that leave. And they think they're in the right. That's okay. God, God has to has to deal with every man, doesn't he? Yeah. Because God sees the heart. Proverbs chapter 22, verses 17 through 19, it says, Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips. Yeah. That thy trust may be in the Lord. Amen. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Yeah. Why is it a good thing to have our heart uh, and apply our heart to knowledge and to listen to the words of wisdom so that our trust will be in the Lord? Yeah. And in Him only. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Not that we'll trust in the flesh or the arm of the flesh, but that we'll totally and solely trust in God. Yeah. Look at 2 Timothy, back in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And this is what I was alluding to earlier. I, was, I said verses 1 and 2, but it wasn't. It was verse 14 and 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14 says, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Amen. But shun profane and vain battlings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Yeah. And their word will eat as doth a canker. That canker is like cancer. <laughs> That's a pretty good picture. Of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, 
So we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, to know what the truth, the words of truth are, and then stay away from the profane and vain babblings. People want to argue from the physical of feelings and, and, and emotions. Stay away from that. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to win that argument. <laughs> Just stay away from it. You know, God is God, is He not? Man. And God sees the heart. And if someone's truly wanting God in their life, then they'll hear. Jesus said, if they're, if they're of me, they'll hear your words. If they're not, they will not hear your words. And I'm paraphrasing that's basically what he said. And so, we need, we need to understand that. And then number three, withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. You know, our children need to understand correction. And, and they need to understand uh, there's a right way and a wrong way, amen, and that there's consequences. Yeah. when you do wrong. Because they're going to grow up and go out into a world that's going to teach them everything the opposite of what you're teaching them. And if they haven't been corrected in their lifetime and understand correction, then you know what? I tell you what, these colleges nowadays are just places of corruption that are ruining the minds of, of young people teaching all these damnable doctrines and heresies and, and all these things. And I wonder, where were the parents? They didn't care enough to teach their children the truth. I mean, really, our young people that are coming up, it's scary to think yeah. of the young ones that are in college right now that are going to be leading the world in, in the things that they believe and the ideas that they have, I tell you what, it starts at home. Yeah. <laughs> Teaching truth starts at home. Don't expect someone else to teach your kid what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. If you're not going to teach your kid at home, they need to be taught. And you know what I get from my kids sometimes, you know, well, they're doing it. They get to do it. So that you're, they're not my kids. <laughs> you're my kid, and you're not going to do it. <laughs> I don't care what other kids are doing. That's, you know, they have their own parents. You're my child, and you're going to do what I say. Amen. And... They respect it because <laughs> they have to. <laughs> but you know what? One day they're going to grow up and the Bible says to train a child in the way they should yeah. go and when they're old they won't depart from it. That's right. And I'm going to tell you what, it's hard training a child. It is. It is that's the hardest thing there is. I'd rather train a dog, a horse, <laughs> you name it. I'd rather train a crocodile. <laughs> Training children are hard and it takes repetition and it takes constant reminding and it takes just over and over a continual dripping <laughs> on their heads. It's so much I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to waterboarding, but... <laughs> not for the faint of heart. And I think that's where parents go wrong is they're faint of heart. Yeah. And they'll try for a while to teach their children right and then give up. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you what, your kids will test you every moment of every day. And if you are not tough, man, you'll give up and give in. But that's the worst thing that we can do. I'm going to tell you, nothing will teach you more faithfulness than 
training your child in the way they should go. Because you learn real quick, if you're not faithful, then when they get an inch, they'll take a mile. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, this world teaches it's wrong to spank, but we don't need to care what the world thinks. Yeah. We need to think. We need to care what God thinks. Yeah. Right. The Bible says, if we love our ch children, then we're going to correct them with a rod. Amen. And that word rod there means like a switch. Yeah. Man, there's nothing better than a switch <laughs> when a kid needs a spanking. <laughs> All right, look at Proverbs chapter six. In verse 20 through 23 it says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. When thou walkest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Amen. And that's what they need to understand right there. Is reproofs of instructions are the way of life. Yeah. You never stop getting <laughs> weapons. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you what. You make mistakes, you're going to get <laughs> you're going to get licked for it. Amen. The world is a vicious place. And you know <laughs> it that people want to jump on every mistake. Amen. And we do serve a merciful God. Yeah. But even sometimes, even God, because He loves us, has to chastise us. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way of life because we are uh, fallen beings. And we got this curse of this old flesh that we have to carry around. And the best thing you can give your child is Jesus. Because when they have Jesus in their heart, and He's working in their heart, and then the things that we teach them from the Word of God is going to stick with them. Yeah. Look at Proverbs chapter 13. Verse 25, it says, The righteous eateth to, satis to the satisfying of his soul. See, I'm not... No. Oh, verse 24, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 13, uh, chapter 13, verse 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him be times. And that word be times means early. Yeah. <laughs> it means you don't let them go on and go on until you lose your temper and then get them. You nip it in the bud. <laughs> you get them quick. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't wait till they're fixing to fall over the edge before you stop them. You get them when you see that they're going towards the edge. Right. And say, get back. I don't think so. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> if you wait till they get to that edge, it might be too late. Yeah. So chastise them B times early. Nip it in the bud, as old Barney Fife used to say. <laughs> All right, and then Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 15. And let's stand as we read. It says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Amen. And you know what? If you do it in love and you do it because you want your child to learn and, and, and to have a heart that is broken that they might be tender <coughs> towards the Lord, that child is one day going to thank you 
for the way you raised Amen. that child. Yeah. Because they're going to see, you know, what you did, you did because you love them. Yeah. And for their better, for their better, betterment. And it's the same way with the Lord. You know, it's not it's not pleasant when when God chastises us, but you know, when it's over, it yields that peaceable fruit. Yeah. And we thank the Lord that you know He knows best. Amen. Amen. He always knows best. Yeah. That's right. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. We just pray that you would use it in our hearts. Lord, help it to us to apply uh, the knowledge of your word in our hearts. Lord, and not to turn to the left or to the right, but to go straight on. And Lord, keeping our eyes upon the author and finisher of our faith. And Lord, to do everything in every part of our life. Uh, Lord, founded and established upon your word. And we'll give you the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we sing. The altar is open for those who want to pray.
They all looked at me like, but these big eyes. What is he talking about? Don't you mean your grandchildren, sir? Uh, um, children are they're headaches, but they're a lot of fun at the same time. 278. This is one I'm trying to find. Oh, good. I knew I'd turn the edge of the page down. 278. We'll sing first, second, third, and fourth, and on the last we'll take up the offering, and I don't see Kenny, so Sean, I guess you're it.
You gonna see? All right. This is your hour to shine. <laughs> That sister's holding her hand. That is so nice. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> what are you going to sing? Jesus love you.
one special. Page 308. And when you sing this, I want you to sing it as if you mean it. I surrender all. Do we truly surrender all? Amen. 